Hello, and welcome to Bit Heroes Radio. I'm World Eater, and I'm thrilled to be hosting this podcast with Bit vs. Andy. Hey, what's up, everybody? Bit vs. Andy here. Back at it with Bit Heroes Radio. It is super, super good to be back, world. Uh, just jumping straight into the action here, I'm going to go over our agenda for today's episode. Um, we will discuss a little bit about our time away from Bit Heroes Radio, and then we'll get into some of the most recent one level 1,000 players and their new cosmetics. Then we'll go over the most recent patch notes, including the Valentine's Day event that we have going on right now in game. Then we'll get into fashion heroes, and of course, as always, wrap up with some viewer questions. So, you know, just just tackling the big one. I'm sure we'll get some comments on it. You know, <clears throat> Andy, world leader, you haven't done Bit Heroes Radio in like seven or eight months. It has been way too long away from the podcast. Um, and you know, I'll just give it to you straight, guys. You know, we we uh we had a major disagreement about you know the Glarsdos versus Lattice. You know, <laughs> oh, yeah. name calling, hatred, blackmail, extortion, pretty pretty much everything under the sun we threw at each other. Um, it's kind of just a dark time between us, but uh, you know, it all kind of blew up. You know, World Leader went on and made a comparison video between the two familiars, and, and I just blew up on him. Uh, <laughs> but ever since, uh, you know, we're chill now since 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 World Leader did finally admit that Glarus was superior. Anyways, let's go on with our level 1k players and cosmetics. First up, we do have Hewan 11, and they look very, very clean with their new mount cosmetic. They have Hewan's Throne of the Fallen. Pretty much matches very, very well with the PvP Championship Bundle accessories. One of the cleanest 1K accessories I've seen so far. Congratulations, Hewan 11. That throne is sick. Um, it reminds me, I don't know if you remember from the... I forget which event it was from, but... They had, it was called the Horde. Uh, it was a mount where they had like the little Melvins carrying them around. Um, it reminds me of that one, but then just on top of it is that throne that just looks so sick. So congrats, Huen or Huen. <laughs> Sorry if I butchered that on the 1K. Yeah, I love the little Melvins on the bottom. Super clean. Honestly, didn't even notice it until you pointed it out. So that just made it even better. Yeah. Um, let's see here. We also have Microsoft EP which is another great one. Um, they have this really awesome vehicle as their cosmetic. Super clean, very nice looking vehicle. Got to represent that rev, of course, that room three VIPs. Just can't go wrong. Um, what do you think about it, Eddie? You know, Microsoft PP, you know, I got to say, we did have him in the guild for a moment at the Bit for Sandys, but we are letting room three VIPs get him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, um, no, yeah, the car, the car serving is sick. I think that's a, a sweet... Um, I don't know if it's like more of a sports car or, or what, but yeah, it's a good-looking car. It's Very creative, funny. too, you know. Up next, we have Womit. Honestly, I like theirs a lot because it's very clean, and it kind of looks like it can fit into a lot of different cosmetics that have gold on it. Um, it just has their visor with a name going across it in blue saying Womit. I really think this is one of the cleanest... Um, cosmetics that's come out recently really do enjoy it a lot yeah i agree it's pretty clean spelling out your own name in your uh <laughs> in your 1k cosmetic is something i totally would do myself so gotta support it um and you know one thing that comes to mind is with a lot of people's 1k cosmetics they're so big they can block like a lot of pieces of your fashion but this yeah. is like you said it, it just fits in so much so again congrats womit agree and one more from the same guild as Womit, we have Lucky Charm. Lucky Charm here has probably one of the one of the best cosmetics in my opinion. Um, they have something very similar to the Infinity Gauntlet, which is their Lucky Charm's primordial gauntlet. It's pretty much like all the elements from Codex in a gauntlet, and it just looks super clean, man. Like the the animations are incredible. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, first thing comes to mind is Thanos Gauntlet, you know what I'm saying? So that's just, it's clean, you know. I'm sure if I saw him in PvP too, I'd just get snapped. So <laughs> congrats on 1K, Lucky. 
And that's going to be all of the recent 1K cosmetics that came out. Another congratulations to you all. We also do have Jarvis that's going to be making their push very, very soon. And they haven't yet told us what they're going to do for their cosmetic, but uh, good luck to you, Jarvis. <laughs> yeah, good luck, Jarvis. He said he would charge me $10,000 uh, for, <laughs> for his cosmetic to be a billboard that said subscribe to Andy. So... Um, we'll see if I can pull the funds together for it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> jumping into the next bit of uh, the agenda here, we're going to go over the patch notes from this last week. Let me actually pull them up. Not ready again, huh, Andy? I know, I know. Okay, so the most recent patch notes. These are coming from, or taking effect February 1st, which is the day we're recording here. Um, talking about the Astroth's Eternal Love events, but we won't go too much into that as we're going to cover that on its own. Um, but jumping right in, the daily bonuses are doubled until February 15th, going hand-in-hand -hand with the Valentine's Day event. Raid is boosted, um, so all raids will have a capture rate increase until February 15th, which is really awesome, especially if you're going for any raid epic or legendary familiars. Definitely a good time to grind raids if you, uh, you know, getting the... Start next currency and extra familiars is awesome. Um, they're talking about the new PvP fishing and gauntlet events. Uh, that's pretty normal. Uh, Ninja invasion is here till February eighth, and then Inferno expedition will be replacing that until February fifteenth. Uh, jumping into the shop news, <clears throat> the weekly rotation is thirty five percent off, and gotcha boxes are ten percent off, and there is an ultra lucky boost box available, which I actually think. For the first time ever, I'm going to try to get myself an Ultra Gore. Ooh, good luck yeah. with that. I know, I've been saving gems for a long time for this, and I think I'm going to go for it, so... I'm sure you got uh, it. Yeah, I've got, you know, if I have to buy all 35 <laughs> slots, it's going to be like 39,000 gems. I have 40,000 on hand, which is crazy to even say, but they're all going to be gone pretty soon here. <laughs> so... Yeah. Just pray to shrimps and RNGs Jesus and you'll get it. I know, exactly. <laughs> All right, now we're going to be going over the Valentine's Day event. And there's a lot of stuff to cover, so try to pay attention here, guys. Um, first off, we're going to start off with what is currently in the event shop. Then we'll go to the sales in the shop, and we'll close it off with the best way to farm this event. So we're going to be going over the Valentine's Day event right now. Um, Currently, there is a new currency to go along with it, which are the Golden Skulls. Um, going over the shop real quick, we do have a bunch of new stuff. Uh, first off, we do have the Energy Box that costs 10 Golden Skulls each run, or each roll, sorry. Um, I think it's a fantastic box, but um, what do you think, Andy? Yeah, I mean, I definitely feel for, like, you used to be able to just click on start next and get, like, one of every gold. Now is amazing. Um, you're still able to get them here, but, you know, there's 17 items in there. You got to pay 170 gold skulls for it. You know, not too bad. It definitely pays for itself, though. Like, if you buy that 20 raid shard basket um, for 10 gold skulls, like, you're getting more than 10 skulls back. So that one's a no-brainer. Um, basically just free loot pretty much out of there. Agree, agree. For the next box, we do have the new cosmetics chest. I haven't yet got all these cosmetics here, but once I do, I'll definitely make sure I share them with you guys. A bunch of new stuff, all Valentine's Day themed, and I think they look really, really great. Not too sure if they're animated, but if they are, that's a bonus, honestly. Hey, world leader, if I wore broken heart shield left, would you stand next to me with broken heart shield right and, and we can make a heart? Only if you admit a lattice is superior, <laughs> of course. Oh, no. <laughs> no, not worth it. Not worth it. Oh, okay. I see. I see where the love falls. Then <laughs> I see where it falls. Moving on to the next chest, we do have the old cosmetics, some oldies, but that doesn't mean they're bad. We do have the Astaroth set here. It's kind of a little different than the other one that you can get just by farming. Um, we also have the pink one, which is super clean, and a bunch of mounts that I personally like. I like the swan with the rose the most. But um, yeah, yeah this is a pretty good one. 
Yeah, sorry. I think for the uh, cosmetics between the new and the old one, I definitely like the old chest. I really like Pink Taroth. Um, I pretty much like everything around Astaroth, and the pink version is just so dope. And the swans, those the swans are surprisingly clean as well. Um, I remember when I saw them last year, I was like, eh, probably not up my alley, but they are. I like them after I saw them in game. Yeah, they're pretty clean. I like them a lot. So if I missed any of those or if I want them on my NFTs, I'm probably going to snag them just so I have a little more bit swag. <laughs> um, so going on to the material box, pretty much the same old, same old. This one costs 50 golden skulls to roll. Um, but yeah, it has, has pretty good materials. I recommend rolling this one like crazy, especially if you are a free to play, this should be probably your most important box to roll here. Um, but yeah, you can't go wrong with anything in this box. Yeah. I always try to max out the map box just, to just useful stuff honestly all of it every piece uh, moving on to the boost box um pretty standard in here there is the heart gore which is a week-long 250 percent capture rate boost um which is pretty interesting you know not a lot of not not all your boosts have capture rate um so if you are trying to get a familiar but you don't want to use you know it's also item find you might want to do that part again wait is it also item find yeah what let me look at this. Oh, it totally is. Okay. <laughs> well, scratch really that. <laughs> <laughs> scratch that. It's also item find. Um, well, you know, Andy, uh, it seems like uh, you didn't do your homework, but it's fine. <laughs> Moving on to the next box here, which is going to be the Big Gore. Of course, we have the Big Gore for 600 golden hearts or golden skulls. Sorry. Looks like I didn't prepare for this video either. Um, <laughs> but we have it for 600 golden skulls. Pretty nice to get. Um, a lot of people say the Big Gore is the most important part, but I think it's something you get towards the end. You should already have a Big Gore saved for an event. If you don't have a Big Gore saved at all times, you're doing it wrong. And trust me, you want to always have something saved to push this event to pretty much get your Big Gore back. Um, but moving on from the bit gore, we also have two more familiars here, which we cannot go over because Andy and I are going to be doing fam reviews of them soon this week. I'm going to be going over Wood to Roth. And I'm planning to cover Captain Astabeard over on my channel as well. So taking a look at the top of the shop here, um, just a heads up, all gotcha boxes are 10% off. Um, as well as weekly rotational items are 35% off. So you can see right at the top, the uh, Ultra Chicken Lucky Ice Boost Sun Box. Um, <laughs> that's what I'm planning to buy for the Ultra Gore, by the way, is 10% off. And then um, we can see some actually new ones here. We've got the Sunken Ship Pack for $30. And you can see in there, it's got the basically the no wide Skelly Cosmetics, which I actually think are super, super clean. Um, same, same. I am a big fan of that one. And then, you know, a stat point and a bunch of resources to use, as well as the heart core on the side. So I actually think that that blade, the broken hearted blade, is probably that is the most alluring thing in this whole event cosmetics wise for me. Oh, yeah. Same here. That thing is I, I really want to wield that puppy. Um, <laughs> and then the other one right at the top here that's new is the lovely mount pack. Um, and there's this mountain here called Uri Kaigun. Eru Kai gun, something like that. Um, <laughs> it's basically a shark. Um, if you look closely on the Steam announcement, you can kind of see the top of the shark. He's wearing sunglasses and he's got a broken heart on his hat. Um, but yeah, just a cool, I guess, more of like an anti love shark. Yeah, personally, I think both packs are pretty nice there's a way better bang for your buck of course with the sunken ship pack seeing as it does come with a nice week-long boost and um a bunch of resources but um if you're one of the people that like to connect um if you're one of those people that like to collect cosmetics like myself i always try to get the mount packs when they come around because these mounts usually never come back so if you like this mount only ten dollars i mean if you really are into this game you might as well get it um but if not Totally makes sense. But definitely, if you're looking for something worth the value um, and you want something exclusive like the cosmetics and a gore to go along with it, the Sunken Ship Pack is definitely a good grab. Um, we also have, of course, the Raid Push Pack, which is 
perfect to get at this time. I don't recommend popping the gore it comes with on those shards. I always recommend a bit gore on those shards. So I would save that gore for another another thing to farm, like zeals or something. But that's another fantastic uh, pack to buy as well. And the last one I'm going to be going over is going to be the Super Raid Push Pack, which is pretty much the same one on steroids. You get uh -huh. a few more... Um, raid shard baskets you get five stat points and instead of the other gore you get a bit gore which to me this is a decent pack but again this one is a little more expensive i do wish these packs went down a little i honestly wish the raid push pack was around 20 and the super raid push pack was around 30 but um it's still pretty good but for the first two packs that andy went over i highly recommend those if you're looking to grab some awesome cosmetics yeah totally and and, and not to uh push too much on on these packs but it is you know if you are going for one of those raid familiars like i said you know for the entire two weeks of valentine's event there is a raid familiar capture rate boost just straight up so um definitely good time um, whether or not you get these packs to just do a lot of raids yeah for sure you want to capitalize on those raids um especially if you're farming something in an older tier you want to be there as little as possible just get the fams you want and get out Right now is the best time to do it. So doubling down on what Andy said, make sure you do your raids, guys. Very, very important, uh, especially this week. So let's make sure we get those raids done, guys. Up next, we're going to be going over the best way to get the event currency so you can get all these awesome goodies in the Valentine's Day shop. Um, first off, I would like to say that my personal favorite is PvP. A lot of people tend to save their tickets all the time and they don't use them. Ask Andy. He's loaded. Um, <laughs> but yeah, PvP, I only did, I say only, but I did 15 packs and I already got to like 500 event currency. So if you have a bunch just lying around and you just want to get a lot of currency very quickly, just pop them. And if you don't care for getting that champion bundle, you can easily get all the currency you need. That's personally what I use my PvP tickets for is pushing events to get the currency faster. Yeah, I think PvP might be the most, like, Sardinex currency per hour, like, technically. Um, yeah. But they are a little more expensive. Um, if you're just looking at, like, what can I do during regens, or, like, what can I change during regens to get yourself more currency, definitely, if you're using your energy, prioritize D4s. Um, because every boss that you fight has a chance to drop some and there's three bosses in there and it only costs you 20 energy uh, so it's definitely the most energy efficient way to earn the sardinex currency or the golden skulls this this event yeah you can't go wrong with either they're both very solid methods um but again everything does drop it but if you are looking to optimize definitely don't do regular dungeons do the d4s for sure um i know world boss gives some but i'm not sure how good the drop rate is there compared to the other two so those are definitely our two most recommended spots to farm this event currency and i honestly think the best thing to do is to hold on to all of your currency until the last week so you can decide what is more important to you that way you know more or less what you actually can afford um in the event shop because sometimes people get way more event currency than they think they're going to get and they make the mistake of rolling another box that they wouldn't have rolled otherwise if they had all the currency in front yeah. yeah i am just not that patient world not gonna lie <laughs> i get 50 and i put it immediately in the material box or cosmetic <laughs> got that itch to roll yeah yeah oh man but, but that is wise advice i would i would take it <laughs> and that's pretty much going to be it for the valentine's day event if you have any questions about the event just ask us in the comments tell me what your favorite cosmetic is i'm honestly extremely curious I'll go ahead and tell you mine as a response in the comments below. Up next, Andy's going to be kicking it off with Fashion Heroes. All right. So it's been a long time waiting for who won the last episode's Fashion Heroes. Last time in Fashion Heroes, we pitted Soapsy versus Zweebody. And Soapsy, I hate to do you like this, but it was a unanimous dub for Zweebody. So congratulations, Zweebody. Congrats, Z Bodhi. Yeah, sorry, Soapsy. Um, I personally really liked your cosmetic, but one person does not outvote others. <laughs> so I do apologize, Soapsy. But yes, 
Very, uh, congratulations to Zwie Bodhi. Very, very nice cosmetics. You are going to be in the Hall of Fame for Fashion Heroes. And up next, we do have two contenders, but only one of them is new. So first one is Persuade You, and the second one is actually a redemption from Soapsy themselves with a new look. All right, so let's check out Persuade You here. You can see he's rocking the flying fortress mount. What's does he know the name of that sucker? <laughs> Let me see. Oh, it is the far F A W R pod. <laughs> okay, he's rocking the far pod. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Love say it, it again. It. Say it again. Say it again. <laughs> well, he's he's rocking the far pod here. Um, and you know, there's a lot of movement, a lot of a lot of elements flying around. Pretty sick. I, I'd call this a sick cosmetic. Sorry. Big flex on that uh, on that accessory. It's called like Morphium or something. When you get like uh, all the ancients or something uh, in slots, I think it's a milestone reward. So that's that's a big flex as well. Oh yeah, super clean pet. I love that pet. Um, personally, I think this is a really really nice. Uh, cosmetic setup. I love all the elements as well. And you don't really see many people showing off that accessory as a cosmetic. And I really do like it um, as a cosmetic because it just has so much going going on, but in a good way. So I personally think it's a plus having that accessory as well, along with that really awesome sick pet that you were just talking about. Um, up next, we do have Soapsy again coming back with a new look, a new beach look. And honestly, I really like it. I love the sunglasses that they have with their pet kind of matching. They have their surfboard right behind them and those awesome two ice cream flavors. I think it's mint chocolate chip and maybe a strawberry or watermelon. Not too sure, but the flippers definitely go hard. <laughs> Not gonna lie, the dual wielding popsicles plus the matching sunglasses on the uh, Sungor pet, and uh, I guess his head there is just—it's clean. I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for a redemption art for Subsy here. <laughs> Same. But uh, but anyways, please let us know who you think has the better fashion in the comments below. And if you guys would like a chance to participate in the next segment of Fashion Heroes, drop your hero tag and let us know. You know, leave a comment saying, I want to be in the next Fashion Heroes. Here's your hero tag. And you just might be featured. Yes, so don't be shy. There's a lot of people that have been on here that didn't think they'd win. And believe it or not, they've won. And now they're in the history of Fashion Heroes. The Now they're in the hall. The... Eh. Now they're in the, what's the word I'm looking for? Hall of Fame. <laughs> oh, there you go. Now they're in the Hall of Fame for fashion heroes. So don't be shy. Just share your hero tag and we'll definitely take a look at you for our next episode. Our pod. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And diving into a couple of viewer questions from previous episodes. We've got a question here from DW Gaming who says, what are some of the best schematics and characters to grind for around the middle game? Um, so I'm just going to say, like, the most popular ones for, like, DPS, tank, and bait tank. And you guys, if you <laughs> if you know me at all, you guys already know what bait and tank I'm saying. But I think for DPS, and depends what you call mid game, you know, does mid game start at tier 10? Does it start at tier 5? I, I would probably say tiers, you know, 8, and up where the ancients start coming but you know that's up to each player you know some people say you only get to mid game once you get to current tier and that's how i feel <laughs> i feel so behind but anyways <clears throat> i think for a dps familiar and somewhere in the mid game is at tier 14 you can uh, craft penguita an awesome combustion familiar um, at tier 11 you can make a mythic tank so that's kind of a beast to make but it's called tethius an absolute banger of a tank a lot of end game players still use it um, and my personal favorite honestly if you're a dps player it's the only familiar you'll ever need <laughs> uh well almost the only familiar you'll ever need and that's at tier 10 you can make a glars dose so world do you have a few that you'd recommend yeah, um, definitely have some upgrades to recommend, at least for one of the familiars there. But uh, first off, I do like to mention some easier familiars to make that are a little off meta, a little more uh, sleeper pick, if you will. Uh, the first one is going to be Bruagaya, which is accessible at tier 16. 
And in my opinion, uh, mid game is around tier eight to tier 16. But like Andy said, it just depends on the player. Um, I do think once ancients are involved is when you kind of go up a little bit. Some people say once elements are involved is when it goes up, but it really just depends how it feels to you. Um, I think after or on tier 17 plus though is definitely end game. So um, there's that, at least for right now. But Bruya Gaia is an amazing pick. Honestly, very slept on. But Bruya Gaia is honestly a very slept on tank that is used in a fusion for Thunmolf. And Thunmolf is honestly a very reliable bait. You really can't go wrong crafting them afterwards. Um, Bruya Gaia comes with 15% damage reduction and 5% deflect. And they only take um flag bosses to make so it's a lot easier to make than your average tank which is what's so compelling about them they also have a zero sp shield self giving them a lot of survivability so that's a really good pick and we also have another sleeper pick that a lot of people really just don't know about for some reason. I know a few players, including Fyra, like to promote them because they are a very, very good pick for DPS. And that's Flambo. Flambo honestly is super clean. Flambo looks pretty cool and they have a really great effect. They have 22.5% fire damage as a bonus, which is okay. But when you look at their bottom text, you see they have Revenge, which is gain and rage each time your attack is evaded or blocked. And meta right now is pretty much block and evade for most, if not all, baits and tanks. So that's already a really good bonus. Um, I know Andy and I were talking about this familiar earlier before we started recording the podcast. And I know Andy was saying it reminds him a lot of the a &R set. And mm -hmm. we all know a &R is a fantastic set. Before Clover came out, ANR was the meta DPS set to go for. So that pretty much says a lot for this familiar. Um, and last but not least, for my pick on a bait, they're not Sleeper, but they're definitely <laughs> an upgrade from Glars Dose, if you oh. ask me. And that's going to be Alatus. Now, Alatus is technically tier 11. You could technically farm them tier 11. Me and Andy were having a debate about that earlier. <laughs> but um, tier 12 is the average gamer's um, access point to Alatus because you get their boss familiar at T11 D3, which is the last dungeon. And once you defeat the enemy and complete the flag, you access tier 12. So it's pretty much tier 11, tier 12. But they're pretty much a very low stamp bait, lower than Glarz's, and um, <laughs> they have evades. So it's a different type of bait, um, but they're a very, very nice pick. So you just can't go wrong. But all in all, everything put aside, you can't go wrong with any of these recommendations that we made. Um, I like telling people easier fams to make or familiars that are really good that people don't know about. But um, the staples that Andy mentioned are definitely definitely probably your best bets when it comes to um best in slot for a free to play or a mid game player yeah uh, besides the lattice i completely agree uh moving <laughs> on to the next question um this one comes to us from jonathan was wrong who says <clears throat> question it has become a debate does capture rate affect schematic materials and schematics and i'm assuming it means drop rates um I definitely don't think capture rate has any impact, um, but item find has an impact on schematics. I believe. I, I don't think it's ever been posted by the devs one way or another, um, but I think the general consensus is schematic materials are not impacted by item find, but the schematics themselves are. So I know that the schematic is definitely affected by item find, but for the materials, sadly, they are not. Um, you're just going to have to farm those. Honestly, on regen is the best bet. Or just farm it on the easiest difficulty that you can solo. That way you can just farm it on your own terms really easily. Yeah, kind of a shame because like <laughs> I remember as a noob, I, I popped a pick card because I needed, a, I forget what it was, but <clears throat> some sort of material and I just did not see it come in. I was kind of oh, salty no. about it. <laughs> oh, no. But uh, so long ago, I can't even remember what it was. So it's repressed, repressed memory. So we're good now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were all noobs there, stuck on Fishing <laughs> Island, trying to trade with randoms. 
I totally get it. <laughs> but sadly, guys, that's going to be the end of the podcast. Um, we are just getting back into this, so give us some time. We're definitely going to be coming out with some more episodes. We're not going to give you a time frame, though, because we're still trying to work some stuff out. But Andy and I both decided that Bit Heroes Radio is back and is going to stay on our channel. So keep an eye out for our podcasts and our videos so you can stay tuned. Um, we thank you so much for tuning in to today's video, and we hope you enjoyed listening to our discussion today about all things Bit Heroes. As always, we want to give a big shout out to our community of fans who made this podcast possible. We love you all, honestly. Thank you so much. Yes, I want to double down on that shout out. Everybody who tunes in or leaves comments, leaves a like, thank you, thank you so much. Um, if you guys have any feedback or suggestions, um, if you guys have any viewer questions for future episodes, we'd love to hear from you guys in the comments. Uh, you can also reach, us, reach out to us on Discord. You can find both of us in the official Bitverse Discord. Yes, I also wanted to say um, check out uh, Bitverse Andy's Discord. I'm also going to leave a link for that in the description below. Um, I currently don't have my own Discord um, at the moment, but I am always in Andy's Discord, and it's always a blast to be there. So definitely check that Discord out as well. Um, I definitely want to double down on the comments part. Um, if you have any questions at all, don't think they're dumb. We all had those questions, and you never know. It might save you some gems, save you some time in the game. Ask the question below, and we'll definitely answer it in either the next episode or in the comment section below so you can have the correct answer. Also, I want to remind you to subscribe to both of our channels. Mine's going to be World Eater on YouTube, and Andy's is going to be Bitverse Andy on YouTube as well. Um, which you can find the links for in the description. So make sure you check that description, guys, because everything you need is down there. Yeah, and if you enjoyed the show or didn't, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> and if you enjoyed the show, please consider leaving a like and a comment and make sure you guys are voting on the recent fashion heroes. Um, but yeah, likes and comments are great for the, for the channel and it helps other bit heroes discover our podcast. Thank you all again for listening and we'll catch you next time on Bit Heroes Radio.